Hi, I'm Mike Morales. You're watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our social media platforms and our website and YouTube and podcasting. I'm here at San Antonio. That gentleman out there is Jim Johnston in Youngstown, Ohio. Jim and I have the distinct pleasure, distinct, see what I did there? We have the distinct pleasure of talking about and dissecting Aguila Select Tequila. Now, this tequila probably from my screen looks a little bit darker than from Jim's screen. Jim has got this all this brand new track lighting and he's got overhead lighting and he's if it wasn't for his t-shirt, we'd only see his smile. You know? Hey, cut it out. The lighting, the lighting doesn't help the face, but hey, I got it done. <laughs> Uh, that's my dog yeah, howling in the uh, in the background there because I think we're getting a delivery of probably tequila for all I know. Um, anyway, we've been talking about distinct and the we had a, a, the Blanco. We loved it. We thought it'd be a great um, uh, gateway tequila. It, it was just a very straightforward, very non-complex uh, flavor profile. In fact, it's very very consistent. I like the flavor profile and the nose. It just matched it was yeah. really nice uh but there's not a whole lot of information we th there's not a whole there, the website is under talent spirits it's just a landing page yeah so the only the only the only real social media that they have is on instagram so they're all over st louis missouri they're on several accounts like lakeside and uh um a candy kitchen and i don't know if that means anything to folks who are watching us in st louis or in, or in Missouri in general. <laughs> um, I don't know if they're in Kansas City, Missouri. I, I don't know. You know, maybe they're just trying to solidify their, their territory in St. Louis. But um, the distillery is 1107 El Viejito. And we've talked about, oh, there have been a lot of great tequilas coming out of there. Karma Tequila, um, uh, Santo Mesquila, which is uh, uh, Sammy Hagar's uh, Mezcal Tequila, Combo. Um, there's uh, uh, Tromba is actually coming out of that distillery as well. And I hear a lot of great things now about that particular distillery. One of the ones that, that and, I, and I told this to Jim uh, um, on our last tasting, one of the tequilas that came out of there was Trader Joe's House Tequila years ago. And it's still there. It's called Distinct. And it kind of, he had to look at it very closely because it resembled a lot of the Patron bottle. And then at that time, Patron was, was, was uh, that would, they were making tequila for Patron. And so it, it was kind of like a poor man's Patron, okay? But it was really good. I love the flavor profile. Now, here's what I'm going to say. The Blanco and the Repo look very, very much similar. I, I, they, yeah. yeah. Does, do we know anywhere anything about how long it's being aged? We we know nothing on the on the on the drizzly on the drizzly site that I was looking at. It said rested uh, on oak for a minimum of six months. Okay, so it's a traditional, you know, anywhere from from what uh, uh, reposado is two months to 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 uh, just under a year, you know, right. something like that. Usually you get from say two, two, six, eight months. Um, from the looks of the color, I I would say this is probably a used barrel. You know. Yeah. Um, I I don't. Um, we the reason we liked it, we nominated it as a brand of promise in the in the uh, uh, in in the value category as well. well judging from the price of the reposado. The value category and the gateway category, because because I think the flavor profile was not off-putting. It was a very approachable tequila. So yeah, um, let's let's try let's let's pour some of this. I'm I'm going to use my Stasso Jarrito, the little the wide mouth, the one we use for usually for mezcal, and so I noticed right off the fork there that. However long it rested, it did mellow that sharp citrus vegetal thing, the pop we got right when we opened the bottle. It, it mellowed I, it a little bit. Um, you, you can smell the wood. I mean, that oh, yeah. Right off the bat on the, on the cork. Oh, yeah. 
and and even on the juice but see take a look look how light look how light that repo is that's like a pale strong it's very very light and they said they said uh minimum six months minimum it, six months minimum okay so it's a six months for sure for sure it's got to be used barrels but this is this is a and now, now I feel now I can sense a another layer of the complexity on top of the on top of the and you're shaking your head yes this has been, <laughs> toned, the, this has been toned down from the head of the, the big bright citrus pop and it's got a lot more you you can definitely pick up a little bit more sweetness in the aroma a little bit more of the wood and, and it's the citrus is still there but it's it's been it's been taken down a, a peg. Yeah, uh, and and there's more there's more wood notes coming through. So so it's a it's 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 now the added layer of complexity that that maybe the uh, the, the the plain Jane Blanco didn't have. You know, right. not, not that not that that was a bad thing because honestly, you know, the more straightforward your tequila, the better off you are. Because you know, right? If there's more if there's more going going into it, then there's probably more going on. Okay. I'm surprised with how light this is. Yeah, me too. And and that's why I'm saying I'm thinking that the barrels, just judging from the color, not knowing anything else about where they're sourcing barrels or whatever, I'm thinking that this is like a used barrel. They're they're probably maybe it's you know uh, urban. Yeah, could well it could be. Let's let's taste it. Let's find out. All right. Because you you'd be able to tell me better than I could. That would put a little finish on this one. Yeah, finally, huh? Yeah, it's getting it's getting down there a little deeper. And that would you pepper, the would, pepper kick has got that a little extra oomph of the char from the barrel, the wood from the barrel, giving it some background there. And it's 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 not an off-putting pepper flavor. It's a good spicy kind of barrel age flavor that I think is nice. Well, the the blanco itself had had like an ex uh, a short explosion of pepper, right? Not not like those enormous ones you get from from other tequilas we've had, like at mid palate. That almost happened right at the beginning of the you know, like your your first third of your palate. There was the that pepper's pepper. a little bit further back. Yeah, exactly, and that's because of back. the barrel. That's that's the I think the barrel spiciness is doing it. And I honestly cannot tell you if this is a bourbon barrel because i do get a little hint of that <clears throat> baking spice and a little bit of caramelized sugar that's mellowing that citrus flavor in it but the way i think that the the, the oak is hitting the pepper it, it it's almost and it could just be because this tequila has got that natural kind of peppery brightness to it it's almost like it was virgin oak which really wow because i get that peppery the pepper just has a little astringency at the end of it. Not bad. It's it's like a citrus hit at the end of the pepper, but it I think that's what's giving it the finish. It could be bourbon barrels, but it doesn't give me a distinct bourbon flavor. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm getting more whiskey. Right. You know, because again, there is a there is there there is a difference, folks. Okay. It it really depends on where where they're getting their barrels or where they would like to get their barrels. It St. Louis, isn't it um you know that's bourbon country, but but Tennessee whiskey barrels are much more available, I think, on the market just because there's just everybody wants a Jack Daniels barrel. But well, but bourbon <laughs> bourbon's had its you know bourbon has had its uh, um, has been coming up in the last I would say five years. I think it's gotten very very popular. Yeah. So yeah. there's so now I think the the second hand the the secondary market for bourbon barrels is is probably a lot higher now and maybe they're more available um you ever been to st louis do you know missouri is a is yeah a I, i've got uh, family in st louis actually so is it more bourbon or whiskey friendly honestly um and again it's bourbon whiskey but bourbon as in as in uh 
you know, like Tennessee whiskey in it. Corn mash bill. Like, I, I, be, I, you know, it's it's a Budweiser town, but it's definitely <laughs> they drink a lot of different stuff there. I, I you know, I'm sure both kinds of whiskey do well. They're they're in proximity to both states. I would say what I'm tasting off of this, it might be a bourbon barrel that, that is not an, a long term aged bourbon. And it might be a corn mash whiskey, just just not on the same bourbon mash list where that oak has a little bit more of a sweetness and it's it's newer and the wood does not have the same kind of char. Because yeah. I don't get a deep baking spice caramelized sugar off of this, but I just get enough that makes me think it was charred, it held some whiskey, but it didn't pick up that character that bourbon usually gives it, which... We got to find out. There's no information. I, I, yeah, there's there's none. And if it is a used barrel, chances are it's already held tequila. Because again, bourbon and and whiskey can only be used once, and they have to be virgin barrels, correct? Yeah. And now that this is opened up a little bit, and and I'm getting that that pepper is not as bright to me on the back end. I do pick up a little sweetness off this, which would. Tell me that there's a little bit more corn in the mash in the barrel than there was anything else. Okay, so so in in which case, and we would say the primarily whiskey barrels as opposed to bourbon barrels. Is that is that where is that where you're headed? Uh, it, it would it would not surprise me if it was a um, a young bourbon. Okay, a young bourbon. You know what would what would probably help us is if. We drank a lot more of this together, you know, because bourbon would would eventually we would get the 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 dry mouth. We get that that. Oh yeah, because if, if bourbon finishes dry, correct? I mean, doesn't it go in sweet and finish dry, whereas whiskey goes in goes in dry and finishes sweet, something like that? Or, or am I yeah, getting? It depends. I mean, the bourbon usually you can you can pick up on the bourbon. You're going to get the barrel. You're going to get a little bit of the sweetness, and it does have a little bit of that drier finish on it, but it really depends on the mash bill because there's a minimum. You don't, it, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to stop at the minimum. So some people make their bourbon where it's a little bit sweeter. It's a little, it's got a little bit more of an actual corn mash sweetness to it, but this is nice. I think, I think it's mellowed that Blanco down to something that's got a little bit more complexity. Yes. And I'm not going to say it's straight up, you know, this isn't an eight or twelve year old bourbon barrel that they're using for this, but I wouldn't imagine if it's a higher corn content sweetness in a charred barrel that's the smell of this a little bit. It's nice. It is. It's really good. Um, here's what I'm gonna say too, after having sipped it like I got like three sips out of it. Um, there's way more character now. Yes. With the barrel. The the other the the Blanco. And I love Blancos. Don't get me wrong. I, I am a, a I love Blancos, but but it was a straightforward bron Blanco. There wasn't any complexity, and there was no lying to you. In other words, the the nose didn't belie the flavor profile. They actually they were very they were consistent, and I like that. I like I like smelling and knowing what I'm going to get. Unless unless you're ready to surprise me with this reposado, um, I. That it's got some strong character to it. It does, and whatever whatever barrels they are using have imparted some character that I think has taken the blanco into an extra level of complexity. That that is, it's it, it's picked up a little bit more depth. That finishes a little longer. Yeah, and it's just muted some of the brighter spots of the blanco, but not in a bad way. Now it's got a little bit more. Time. You got to spend a little bit more time with it. Yeah, it's almost like it's got. It's almost like we got two different types of juice. Right. You know, it's, like it's almost like it's like it's two different. It's almost like two different brands. Like um, the, the Blanco was a was a an empty easel to, to paint something on. The barrel was the, what they used. I mean, I think it's. I think it's a good. It's a good step. Yeah, I think so too. I think I think for the market, they they did the right thing. Um, what do you think, brand of promise in that repo category? I think so. Absolutely. Uh, what did you say the price was that you had found on Drizzly for the Reposado? 26. Uh, but I don't know if that includes a delivery fee because we don't have that in my state. But it, the, the, the price range that I've seen associated with any bottle that looks like this has been in the low 20s, low to mid. 
Wow. So if you can find it, if you, you know, you know what? Here's the thing. If you're whatever you're, you're if you're watching us on YouTube or if you're listening to us, you know, shoot us an email or write a comment. Let us know if you've had it before and what you think and what the price points are. Because again, we're flying blind, folks. We are Absolutely. just using our 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 human senses, you know, that we have <laughs> through lots of practice. Which I'm not upset about. Yeah, you know, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, it, you yeah. know, again, it's literally a blind tasting. And uh, other than having the bottle in front of us, you know, um, but with minimal information, I like that, you know, the that you've got not lingering bubbles, but you get some. Uh, it is copper pot distilled, according to the information we have on the back of the label. It is 1107. That's the known number that is El Viejito, where a lot of award-winning tequilas come out of. Um, I say Brenda Promise nominee in that Reposado category and also in the... In, in that value category, because you know what? You can't beat that long, price man. with a stick, man. That's, hey. That I, price, I think that would be absolutely a definite pick it up. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, though. It'll be, it's one of those dangerous tequilas where you're playing cards or smoking cigars or something. You, that's got enough character you could smoke a really a, a nice, lighter uh, cigar because. I think a Connecticut leaf would be great with yeah, that. There you go. There you go. Yeah, but it's one of those, if you're playing cards or it's a snowy day outside, you could very easily drink, you know, half, two-thirds of the bottle and not know that you went through it, you know. And not be that upset because it's twenty six ninety nine. I know. <laughs> Go get more. <laughs> you know, buy, hey, at that price, buy a case, okay? Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, that's our take on uh, Aguila Select out of, out of Missouri. If, you, if you're anywhere in Missouri, particularly in, in St. Louis, Pick it up, say hi, tell them you saw it on Tequila Aficionado Media, on, on, on whatever platform you're watching or listening to us on. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That young man out there is Jim Johnston in Youngstown, Ohio. And you have been watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media. Wherever you are listening or watching, uh, please subscribe, download our podcast, and whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely.